You asked and I delivered another installment of automating Android games with Python. In this one we're going to be automating some sick dunks and some 3D basketball. So let's get started. So this particular arcade game is a take on a basketball game that you'd find at a arcade that you'd actually go into. You'd see a little machine here, it'd have five balls, you'd throw the balls into the hoop and typically you'd have to score the most amount of points within a certain period of time. Sometimes that hoop will move back and forth and this game is no different, we got the hoop that moves. So in terms of game mechanics, it's pretty simple. Grab a ball, throw it towards the hoop, and hopefully it goes in. As you can see, I'm like a regular Michael Jordan out here. So as I was thinking up an approach on how to automate this game, I was experimenting a little bit, and there's a couple of observations that I made. The first one is that you can either throw it just a little bit short, or you throw it far enough to actually get into the hoop. This means that there's no middle ground into where you throw it, and power doesn't really matter as long as it's enough power just to make it not fall flat in front of you. The second thing I observed is throwing it at an angle doesn't really make it go at an angle. You can see I threw that at like a 30 degree angle, but then it sort of just went straight into the net. The reason this is helpful because for the automation, this means I can grab a ball from anywhere down here and then throw it at an angle, and I know that it's still going to just go straight into the net as long as I've aligned it properly. So the stationary version of this automation is actually pretty simple. We just grab the ball, we look at the coordinates. So we want to throw it from about 540 by 600, up to about 540 by 850, something like that. So we'll start by dropping in our typical boilerplate. That way we can access ADB through Python. This is the same as all the other videos I've done so far. Then we'll drop an infinite loop down here. We'll do our ADB command, and we're going to swipe from something like 540 by 1600 up to 540 by 820, and then we'll do that over 300 milliseconds. So this is basically just infinite ball throwing. So come to our terminal, we'll have a look to see if it works. So this is just going to throw the first ball, it's just going to go in, throw the second one. It's just going to keep grabbing them and throwing them, and then eventually it's going to get into a loop. Yeah, see now it's in a loop, it's just throwing the same three balls endlessly. But this is super simple, this is just a straight throw. This is actually the same as the bowling game, pretty much. Obviously we're not going to stop there because that would be lame. We want to shoot the balls with the basket moving. So with the basket moving, that presents a new challenge. If I were to run the same program again, you could see that a lot of the times it's just going to miss. It's just shooting. Uh, obviously a couple times it's going to go in, like it just went in once, but for the most part it's just hitting the rim and then it's bouncing away. Not ideal. So basically what we're going to need to do is actually monitor the position of the hoop and then compensate where we throw the ball. My initial approach I was going to use was to take a section of this area here where the hoop is, and I was just going to watch the position of the hoop and just track its x-coordinate. The problem with that is when the balls are being shot, you can see that the hoop kind of goes erratic. The other problem is if the ball goes on top of the hoop, then it registers that it's in a position that it's not. So that was pretty much out. The approach I ended up settling on was just to do it based on time. I was able to calculate that the hoop takes exactly 6.25 seconds to do a full cycle from right to left. Of course, that means that it takes 3.125 seconds to go across once. Basically what this means is I start the program when the hoop is at a known point, and then after that I can guarantee that the hoop's going to be where I expect it to be because I know it takes 6.25 seconds to go to the right and then back to the left. So I'm going to need a way to actually track that time, and I'm going to do that by starting a new thread into a function called monitor hoop. Above that, I'm going to set two variables. The first one is min x, which is going to be the x position that is the minimum area on the left, and then the shoot x is going to be where it should actually throw the ball. Inside my thread, I'm going to use the input function to actually block until I hit enter. And what this will do is this will allow me to hit enter exactly when the hoop is all the way to the left. That will give me my known starting point. And then the whole purpose of the following code is basically to determine the x position that it should be shooting at. I'll start by taking the millisecond epoch as the start time, and this will represent the starting point for all future calculations. Next, I need to do a bunch of math, and I'll summarize everything this does. So for the cycle, I know it's 6.25 seconds. The delta is going to be the difference between the current millisecond epoch and the starting millisecond epoch, which I can then use to get the percentage done with the cycle. I can do that by taking delta, mod cycle, and then divide it by the cycle. The direction is going to be which way the basket's moving. This is pretty simple. If it's less than 50% done, then it's moving to the right. If it's more than 50% done, then it's moving to the left. 
This next part's important. The second percentage that I need is gonna be the current percentage done with the cycle plus 0.24, which is gonna represent the amount of delay from both sending the command and how long the actual throw takes. This is the one thing that makes it a little inconsistent because the ADB command does take time and it's not precise every single time. The whole point of this is to throw the ball to where the basket's going to be and not to where the basket currently is. These next four lines is just dealing with the case where the basket's almost to the left or almost to the right and it sort of has to wrap around. If I didn't do this, then the program would just assume that the basket is just way off the screen in some place that it can't even get to. And then finally I get the X position that it should shoot the ball at. And I get this from the minimum possible X position added to the second percentage multiplied by two, multiplied by 250. And the purpose of the 250 is because that's the range of values where the X can be. It can basically be from min X plus 250. And the final thing we need to do before we test is to come down to actually where we throw the ball. And now instead of throwing it to 540, what we actually have to do is replace 540 with the X position that it should shoot to. And I think we're ready to test it out. So we'll start the program. Then when the basket gets all the way to the left, we will then start it and it should start throwing the balls into the net. We'll just watch it a little bit and just make sure it works. So now you can see that it's shooting the ball really well and it's doing so no matter where the basket is. So if the basket goes far to the left, it throws it a little bit to the left. If it goes to the right, it throws it to the right. And so far it hasn't missed a single ball. So I'd say it's working pretty good. There's a couple improvements we can make to this. Right off the bat, there's a problem to where it's only grabbing the ball from the middle. And that's kind of a problem because it's not throwing enough balls. So we can actually solve this quite simply. All we really have to do is just come down here and duplicate this, and then instead of having it grab from 540 only, we'll have it grab from 440 and 640. So this will basically grab the middle ball, but also just to the left and just to the right. So this should, in theory, make it throw more balls. So you can see now that it's kind of grabbing it from anywhere, and it does seem to be throwing a lot more, at least it seems like it to me. Anyway, this thing's thrown like about 100 balls now, and I don't think it's missed a single time. So it's actually working really, really well. So I've switched it to the official game mode now, and I'm reasonably certain that I could leave this forever, because all it does is every time it scores a basket, I get, I get plus three seconds. So I'm pretty sure I could leave this for three weeks, and I'd come back, and it would be in the millions of points. I don't know. I just may do that. We'll see. Anyway, this was a really fun game to automate, and I thought the solution came out really, really well. It wasn't the perfect automation that I hoped for where I could actually monitor the hoop as it moved back and forth, but that's just what it is. There's just too much noise, and it wasn't practical to do that. The other thing is I'm still fighting the ADB delay just a little bit, and that's, of course, causing a problem, too. That's why they're not all perfect swishes, because there's always like a little bit of variance in every time it executes. But I think for what it is and how we did it, it's working pretty great. I plan to do more Android game automations in the future, so we're definitely not done here. If you have any questions about anything you saw in this video, please make sure to leave them below in the comments. Other than that, have a great rest of your weekend, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.